Footage has been released, showing the evacuation from the siege of 35 servicemen of the Amidoid unit under the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Forces 169th Brigade. Besieged near one of the occupied villages, the fighters resisted until the end and waited for help from their fellow soldiers. The fighters were evacuated from the area without any loss with the support of the armored fighting vehicles of the infantrymen who approached the besieged soldiers from the area under the control of Russian servicemen. A Ukrainian telegram channel that shared the video, pointed to the bravery of Ukrainian soldiers who risked their lives to help their fellow soldiers despite the danger of being attacked by Russians. Russian military propagandists have begun openly reporting on the colossal losses among Russian troops in Ukraine, emphasizing the horrific scale of casualties among assault infantry. Reports shared by Russian journalists indicate that commanders are throwing unprepared soldiers to the front lines, where their lives, according to Russian z -War correspondent Kashevarova, are measured in days. According to Kashevarova, Russian soldiers are becoming expendable and the losses among stormtroopers have reached alarming proportions. She notes that the average life expectancy at the front is less than a month, and from the moment of signing a contract until death, it often takes only 12 to 17 days. The soldiers sent to the front are those who lack sufficient training and experience, or those who are not fully treated and wounded who return to battle due to a lack of resources or simply because of the ruthless policies of the command. The effectiveness of the Z infantry on the battlefield is close to zero, turning what is happening into a senseless and expensive extermination of human lives. As Kashevarova points out, in no other area of Russian life can one find such an unprofitable attitude to human and financial resources as in the army. The Russian side's reports indicates that the losses among Russian troops, which Moscow continues to carefully conceal, have reached critical levels. Ukraine sees in these admissions confirmation that the human losses suffered by Russia are in the tens of thousands for the sake of a war that has no end in sight and that is destroying the Russian population for unachievable goals. Recall Vladimir Putin's refusal to withdraw troops from Ukraine and his decision to send poorly trained teenage conscripts to defend Kursk Oblast against a Ukrainian incursion reveals a stark shift in Russian military strategy. Conscripts were meant to serve only in non-combat roles in Russia. Military observers didn't notice large-scale redeployments from the occupied parts of Ukraine with only limited transfers noted, primarily from Ukraine south. Meanwhile, the intensity of Russian ground assault in eastern Ukrainian Donetsk Oblast does not decrease. Meanwhile, various sources reported the transfer of conscripts and preparations for such movements from multiple regions across Russia to Kursk Oblast. The Telegraph argues that this decision marks a departure from Putin's previous policy, which stated that conscripts would only serve in support roles within Russia. The decision to deploy conscripts in Kursk has even sparked limited protests, an uncommon event in the authoritarian Russia. Forced to choose between the lives of unprepared young men and its ambitions for further gains in eastern Ukraine, the Kremlin chose those gains, the Telegraph wrote. Ukrainian inventors have created the FPV drone Kizak Reboff. Its special feature is a fiber optic connection with the operator, which is invulnerable to enemy electronic warfare systems. Forbes reported on the development. Kizak Reboff is an attack drone. Instead of radio communications, which can be suppressed by jammers, it is equipped with a spool of optical fiber, and this is probably the most effective protection of UAVs from electronic warfare systems to date. The Russian occupation forces were the first to use this technology on the battlefield. The Russians are passing off this development as their own, but it turns out 
that it is a renamed Chinese UAV model which the Russian army buys from its suppliers with a 750% markup. Nevertheless, the fiber optic drone turned out to be very effective. Ukrainian developers immediately began creating their own version of such a drone. This is how the Rebov Hizak appeared. This is the first model in Ukraine, but certainly not the last. The drone was built by 3D Tech LLV, a company founded by war veteran Alexei Zulinsky. In the summer of 2022, the car he was riding in was blown up by a mine. Unfortunately, two of his fellow soldiers died and he himself was seriously injured and was unable to return to military service. Now, Zulinsky helps the defense forces by creating UAVs. 3D Tech is constantly improving its drones based on military feedback. Every month, new methods and technologies appear and we need to keep up with them. We are actively searching, testing and implementing new technologies since modern warfare is developing very quickly. The head of the company said, One of the biggest problems for the free use of UAVs on the front line is jammers. A large number of them have flooded the line of combat contact, which is why a no-fly zone has been established there. Many enemy targets have become unreachable for the defense forces. And today, the only connection that cannot be affected by enemy electronic warfare is optical fiber. In essence, this is a cable that connects the UAV and its ground station. Today, the company has working versions of UAVs with coils up to 10 kilometers long. Another feature of such a drone is the ability to fly at extremely low altitudes, even at knee length. The enemy often expects the drone to attack from above, so it usually watches the sky. However, fiber optic controlled drones can approach targets while out of sight of the enemy, flying at low altitude, which increases their effectiveness and adds an element of surprise, Zulinski said. A drone on fiber optics is also a very stable connection that does not break, even in buildings. Despite the fact that the UAV flies with a tether, the developers were able to achieve its high maneuverability. It is able to hover in one place, circle above the target, turn around, doing all this at high speeds. This opens up the possibility of using UAVs in urban or underground combat. They can be launched ahead of or even in place of infantry, checking buildings and hitting targets while their operators remain at a safe distance. The article says,